All right, so today we're going to start chapter eight and nine. Uh, it's going to start with systems of equations. You've actually dealt with this back in Math 10C, so it shouldn't be super new or super revolutionary. Uh, so let's get going. Uh, so today's plan is we're going to solve system of linear equations by graphing both physically and through graphing calculators. Uh, we'll look at linear quadratic graphs. That's where you have uh, a linear equation and a quadratic equation, and we're seeing where they meet. Uh, and then lastly, a quadratic quadratic graph. That's where we're looking at two different quadratics and seeing where they meet. Then, of course, we have some practice. So let's get going. All right, so recall from Math 10C that a system of equations is where you have two or more separate equations with the same variables. Uh, so for example, we could have y equals 3x minus 5 and y equals negative 4x plus 9. If both of these are graphed, the point of intersection is called the solution. In other words, it's the point, x, y, so a coordinate, that is shared by both equations. So if we were to graph both of these, both of these are linear equations. A linear equation can just be graphed by looking at the constant term. So on the first one, it's negative 5 uh, and plotting it. And then looking at the slope. So on the first one, once again, it's 3. So you go over 1 and then up 3. And then go over 1 and up 3, over 1 and then up 3, and so on just so we can get a full graph going. Uh, and then we can even go in reverse over one and then down three. And that should be good enough. Then I'll do my best to kind of connect all this with a straight-ish line. Let's see if I can do this. It's way harder than it looks. Don't judge, don't judge. All right, here we go. That right there is the very first one. Now we can graph the second one again, negative four X plus nine. So the, uh, the Y intercept is positive nine. And our slope is negative four, so we go over one, down four, one, two, three, four, over one, down four, that'd be here, over one, down four, one, two, three, four, over one, down four, and I think that's about as far as we can go, and if we try connecting this with a line, it'll look something like this. Good enough. Okay, so again, the solution to this is the point of intersection, which we can actually quite clearly see between the two of these. Uh, it's this point right here. Uh, and the actual coordinate for that would be the coordinate 2, 1. So the solution to this system of equations is 2, 1. And you can actually confirm by plugging it into both of these equations. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 is 1, so it works there. Negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 8 plus 9 is positive 1, so it works there. It works for both of them, so it's a solution. Anyway, let's uh, move on. Uh, you can also use a graphing calculator method. So uh, like physically graphing these every single time, it's kind of a waste of time. You, know, you don't really have to do it every single time. Not to mention oftentimes you get like weird decimals as solutions and that just that you won't be able to figure that one out with, uh, with physically graphing it. Uh, so using the graphing calculator method, enter the two equations into Y1 and Y2, right? Then press graph to see what you got going on and change your window if needed. This is where it becomes a bit of a guessing game Sometimes you have to play around with the window settings until you get there. Uh, once you see the intersection or intersections, because there could be more than one, press second and then trace, and then go down to where it says five intersect. And then all you do is you use your arrow keys to line up the cursor where it meets the intersection point and then repeat for multiple points if needed. So you just line up the cursor and then you press enter a bunch of times and then you're good to go. So I want you to try this. Uh, so don't just listen to me. I want you to actually try this. I want you to plug in both of these equations into your calculator uh, and see if you can find the intersection point, or in other words, the solution to this system. There's only going to be one solution. So don't worry. You don't have to change your window too much here. Um, but just give this one a try. All right. So I'm going to go over this one now. Uh, if you throw this into your calculator, the solution that you get, and please, we just need an x and a y here. Just don't say one or the other. Uh, the solution is going to be about 1.67, 1.33. So X is 1.67 and Y is 1.33. I think they were repeating. I just have the answers written in front of here. I can't remember if they were repeating or not. Uh, but again, I'm just going to round it because I think that's pretty much good enough. All right, linear quadratic graphs. This is the next thing we have to look at here. Uh, a linear and a linear, it's pretty predictable. There's, there's going to be like one solution most of the time. Sometimes you have no solution if they were parallel. Uh, but when you have uh, quadratic equations thrown into the mix, you can actually have a bunch of different uh, solutions or possibility number of solutions, right? Uh, so the first kind of situation is where your quadratic and your linear equation don't even meet, right? So in this very first example, you can see that sometimes you might actually have no solution. 
Other times you'll have points where your uh, linear equation just kind of grazes the surface of your quadratic function in just one location. So it is also possible for you to have only one solution here. Last up though, and this is the most common of the bunch, uh, you can actually have two solutions to this if your linear equation kind of crosses right through that quadratic function. Uh, there's not really a way, at least as far as I'm aware, of predicting it before you begin. You just have to graph them and, uh, and see whether or not you've, uh, you've got zero, one, or two solutions. Uh, so let's do a quick example here. Uh, find the solution or solutions to the following system of equations by physically graphing. Uh, and then verify your solutions. So verify just means plug them back into the equations and see that it works. Uh, so first things first, if we're going to physically graph this, the current form that both of these in is absolutely garbage, right? We should have y all by itself. So in this guy, let's just add y to the other side and then I'll write it on the left side just to make it easier. It's going to be y equals 4x plus 3. Same with this guy, if we just add y to both sides, you're going to see it's going to be y equals, uh, like technically y is on the right hand side, but I'll just switch it around because who cares? y equals 2x squared plus 8x plus 3. Uh, now we want to graph each of these. I'll do this one in red, and then I'll do the other one in some other color. But this one's uh, a lot easier to graph because it's a linear equation. Our y-intercept is 3, so we'll put that there. And we have a slope of 4. So that means when I go over 1, I have to go up 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then I'll just repeat this a couple times. I won't be able to go any. Well, you know, I was going to say, I won't be able to go any further, but we'll just imagine that it goes up to 11 right here. Might as well. Uh, and then same with over here. We'll go back one and then down four. And then back one and down four. Back one, down four. Yeah, there we are. Uh, and then I'll just do the best I can to connect this with as straight of a line as I reasonably can muster. This is way easier if you have a ruler. Doing this with a pen tablet is kind of nuts. I know I whine and complain about that all the time. You know, I'm going to stop whining as much. Uh, anyway, this next one, uh, we want to graph this as well, but it's a quadratic and it's actually kind of a messy quadratic. Um, I would just rely on finding your vertex, right? So your vertex of this is just going to be X equals negative B over 2A. So in this case, that's going to be negative 8 over 2 times A is 2 times 2. Uh, and that'll be negative 8 divided by 4. So that'll be negative 2 is your X. And then y, you just plug negative 2 into here. I'll save you the trouble. Uh, y is going to be negative 5. And that means our vertex is going to be the coordinate negative 2, negative 5. So if we go down here, negative 2, negative 5, notice what's kind of interesting. Already we have a, uh, a point of intersection. So like accidentally there, we've actually just found uh, a point where our linear graph in red is actually going to connect with our quadratic graph in blue. But there still is a possibility there might be more than one. So let's let's check this. After you have your vertex for a quadratic graph, you just use your 149 rule. So the 149 rule says that you start at your vertex, you go over one, and then you go up. Uh, hold on, I guess you'd go up one times a. So one times two in this case would be up two. So you're going to go here, uh, and then back to your vertex, go over two places, and then up four times a. So four times two, because two is our a value, would be eight. So we're going to go from negative 5 up to positive 3. And there we are. We actually just found a second solution just, just by accident. So that was pretty useful. Uh, and then, of course, the, the last part of the 149 rule is you go from your vertex over three places and then up 9 times a. But 9 times a in this case is 18. And that's going to take us a fair bit off the chart. So I'm not going to worry about that. I'll just worry about making this thing symmetrical on both sides. And that looks like that'll do it. And then just draw it to the best you can. A nice quadratic. Uh, here we go. Ooh, easy, easy. This is just showing how I should have used a ruler because it looks like I crossed it early, but just trust what you've got. And now we're on the inside. Oh my goodness, that is just the pits. Hold on, I'm going to try that over again. That was just awful. Here we go. That's a little bit better, I guess. Uh, anyway, just do the best you can to connect all this. It doesn't have to be perfect. This isn't an art class. This is just math. Okay, so long story short here, uh, as much as my graph is kind of just the gar like the most garbage thing I've seen in a while, um, you're actually going to have two solutions here. I might as well just write them over here. Uh, your first solution is going to be negative 2, negative 5. So negative 2, negative 5, there's one solution. Your second solution is going to be this guy right here, which is at the coordinate 0, 3. So 0, 3 would be your other solution. Now it says verify your solutions. 
Again, all that means is just take your X and your Y and plug it back into each of these. Um, I guess we can just like independently verify this right now. You can just say, all right, four times negative two minus negative five. So four times negative two, first of all, is negative eight. Minus negative five is negative three. And then negative three plus three is zero. Okay, so this one works for that. Try it again in this one. Two times negative two squared, that's two times four. So that's eight plus eight times negative two. I guess we're down at negative eight now minus negative five, so that's negative three, and then negative three plus three, bingo, bango, bongo, we're at zero, okay? No big deal. Uh, so in other words, this one totally worked. If we check zero, three, uh, that's gonna be zero minus three, so negative three plus three is zero, okay, that one worked. And then on this one, two times zero plus eight times zero, that the whole thing is zero there, minus three plus three, yeah, we got it. Both of these work as if there was any doubt. We didn't have to worry about that. Anyway, moving on. All right, we're going to deal with quadratic quadratic graphs now. Ooh, Nelly, these, these look scary. Well, not really. So I just want you to remember that the leading coefficient a, in other words, the number in front of the x squared, determines the shape of the graph. Uh, if you have a positive, in other words, an upwards facing graph and a downwards facing graph, you actually have a bunch of different situations where you may have uh, no solution, one solution, or two solutions. Uh, so in a case like this, uh, where you have an upwards facing and a downwards facing and their, their vertexes are like above and below each other, there's going to be no solution there. Those things are never going to meet. Uh, other times you'll have two that actually share a vertex. There'll be one solution in that case. And then other times you'll have it kind of like this. There'll be two solutions. Uh, the real question comes in when you have uh, two graphs that are both looking like this. Uh, in, in all practicality, it all depends on how steep each of, those, each of these are. And it gets to be a little bit more complex than this. So we won't worry about formalizing a rule layer quite yet. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, so here's our example. Uh, find the solution or solutions to the following system of equations uh, and then verify your solutions once again. You know, verifying, whatever, you can, you can do it on your own. Um, I'm not gonna worry about it too much. It's not really super necessary here. Uh, anyway, let's get this so it's a, a traditional y equals kind of thing. We'd have to add y to both sides and then add 35. So we might as well just say y equals 2x squared minus 16x plus 35. Uh, and on this other one, add y, add 11. So it's going to be y equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 11. Uh, both of these are pretty, uh, pretty complicated looking quadratics. But as always, when we graph them, we should start by finding a vertex. And I'm just going to change pen colors here just so I can show you how these are different. I'll do this one in red and I'll do the other one probably in blue. Uh, but if we're going to find the vertex of this one, remember the vertex can be found by saying x equals negative b over 2a. So in this case, it's going to be negative negative 16. So 16 over 2 times a, that's 2 times 2. Well, that's just 16 times 4. So x is going to equal 4. And then if you plug that in to find y, I'll save you the trouble. But y is going to equal uh, positive 3. Yes, positive 3. Uh, so in other words, our vertex is 4, 3. Graphing that vertex of 4, 3, that's going to put it over here, 4, 3. And then you can use your 1, 4, 9 rule. Go over 1 from your vertex and then up 1 times a. Well, 1 times 2 is 2. So there we are. And then go back to your vertex, go over 2 points, and then up 4 times a. 4 times a in this, in this case is uh, 11, or sorry, is 8, which is going to bring us to 11. See, I was getting ahead in my math. Uh, so go up 8. It's going to bring us up to 11. And that's about as high as we can go for this. So I'll just stop it right there. Um, but of course, draw your actual quadratic in. Ooh, this is rough. There we go, do what we can. Yoink, and, uh oh, try that again. And yoink, there we go. Okay, that's about as good as we'll get it. Uh, let's do this other one now. Uh, same, kind of, uh, same kind of principle to this one, find your vertex. Uh, I won't rewrite the vertex formula again, but it's gonna be x equals negative b, so positive eight over two times a, so two times two. Well, that's eight divided by four, so that's just gonna equal two. Plug that into where y is, and you're gonna see that y equals uh, positive three. That's actually kind of a weird coincidence. All right, awesome. Uh, so y is equal to three there, so that means our vertex is two, three. So it's actually like the same height as this other one. It's just over a couple places, right? So two, three, it's gonna be right there. Uh, now we want to use the one four nine rule that says go over one from your vertex and then up one times a. Well, one times two is two. What do you know? Look at that. We just found one that met, right? Perfect. We found an intersection. Uh, anyway, next one, go over two points and then up four times a. Well, that's going to bring us up to 11, just like before. 
Uh, and then we just make this symmetrical on both sides. It's going to look something like this. Yoink. Oh, that was awful. Let's try that again. That was better. A little, little bit more smooth. Uh, and then, oh my goodness, just butchering it over here, but let's keep going. Uh, there we go. Good. And then over here and over here. This must be super interesting for you guys to watch. Uh, anyway, so we found our point of intersection. It's that one right there in the middle. That looks like it's at the point three, five. So three, five is our point of intersection. But you might be asking yourself, hey, is there going to be more? Uh, in other words, is this line going to ever connect with this line? Or is this line going to ever connect with this line? Well, the answer is no. And the reason we know it's no is because the overall quote unquote slope of this graph, uh, namely your A value, is the same on both. So it's going to follow that same 149 pattern as we go through it. So in other words, no, these two graphs are not actually going to meet. They have the overall, again, quote unquote slope. It's the rate of change of the function. Uh, so no, they're, they're not going to change. That's, uh, that's all that that's going to do. Okay. All right. Last one here. This is one I want you guys to try to like piece together on your own here. Uh, modeling situations using systems. I want you to suppose that a diver jumped off a springboard located a few meters above the surface of a pool. Which of the following graphs represent this scenario? And what would the point of intersection tell us? So I want you to think about this one. You can even like circle the graph and then write it in the notes what you think that point of intersection would tell you. Uh, but I'll go over it in just one second here. All right. So if you said system A, you're wrong. System B, you're also wrong. System C, though, system C is right. Yes, system C is the good one here. Uh, and let me explain why. Uh, if you look at the initial condition, so at a time of zero, this line is a little bit above this horizontal line. Uh, and you can reasonably assume that this line here, this dark blue line, represents the height of the diver. Uh, so initially, the diver is right a couple meters or some distance. It doesn't really actually have a scale here, but it's some distance above the surface of the water. And then that distance increases before it decreases and eventually it touches the surface of the water. It's at the same height as the surface of the water. Uh, the reason it goes up so much, of course, is because it was a springboard. So the diver's actually getting a little bit of, uh, little bit of height on their jump there. Uh, but system C would definitely be the one that shows that. Uh, if you're wondering why system D doesn't work, because system D looks very similar, it's because uh, the height, the initial height was at the surface of the water. So that would be implying that the diver jumped from the surface of the water and that doesn't make any sense. Uh, system B also doesn't work because it's not going to be a linear pattern, right? Uh, when you fall, you speed up. So there's an increased slope as time goes on. You don't just like fall at the same constant rate, okay? Um, as for system A, I don't know what on earth, what on earth that one's doing right there. That's like, that's like you're jumping from a springboard that's like right at the uh, level of the pool. And then you jump in the air and the pool's been draining while this is happening, like rapidly draining too. I don't know. I don't know what that's doing. Anyway, what does the point of intersection tell us? Uh, well, it shows us the time and height. So and height when the diver hits the water. That's about it, right? So this point of intersection right here, that is uh, the time. That's your x value and your height. That's the y value. Uh, when the diver hit the water. Anyway, all right, that's it for a lesson today. So for practice, I want you to try page th uh, 435, questions two to six, and then nine, and then 10. Uh, just a little bit of practice on this. Uh, yeah, that, that's all I'll say about that. Anyway, if you need me, you know how to reach me. Best of luck.